Hey everybody, it's Hart from My Heart Wine here once again on a nice cool December evening here in the Northeast, New Jersey specifically. Uh, and the wine review we have today, something that goes perfect with that little bit of cool weather, is Katina Malbec. I know why everybody uses a little cutaway now for this, because this is hard to get that in the picture there. Katina Malbec, all right, from Argentina. Uh, some of the highest vineyards in the world. Uh, Malbec, in general, comes from two main places nowadays. Uh, Argentina, where it saw a huge uh, increase in the 80s and 90s. And it's where you're going to find 90%, maybe 99% of the Malbec at your local store. Uh, and then France. Uh, a little bit from the Loire Valley, where it's often referred to as Cot or Cot, C-O-T, uh, and the Cahors region, which is southwest of Bordeaux. Uh, it was originally used a lot of times in Bordeaux uh, to darken up the color. It was known as the black grape uh, because those wines were dark, uh, especially in the Cahors. They make them really rich and earthy and dark, um, and they would take them to Bordeaux to help rectify some of the uh, vintages where they had some light wine. They wanted to make it a little darker. They'd go down and get some Malbec and bring it up and darken up their wines. Um, also kept a lot of the world from knowing about Cahors because to get that wine out of there and into the rest of the world, you had to go through Bordeaux. Uh, Bordeaux had a rule that you had to sell all the wine in Bordeaux before you could bring in any other wine and ship it through their ports. So uh, they effectively crushed uh, that region of the world. It is a little different, different than your uh, Malbecs from Argentina. Uh, if you have a chance, I suggest you go out and try one. They're usually pretty good, much more on the earthy and dark side uh, than what you're probably used to in uh, Argentina Malbecs. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about this one here. Uh, this is a great wine. Uh, unfortunately, it has gone up in price recently. Uh, as you tell, a lot of stuff has gone up in price due to some of the inflation we're seeing, supply chain issues, etc., etc. Uh, so I could probably find it between sixteen ninety nine and nineteen ninety nine on the shelf some, most places. Uh, this is a great wine. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, so it's from high mountain elevations. Between 3,000 and almost 5,000 feet. Uh, so those vineyards are up there. Well, why would you make that effort to get grapes from that high up in the air? That's a good question. Because uh, it's difficult. It's difficult to farm up there, obviously. Uh, so there must be an advantage to it, right? Well, first of all, it gets a lot of sunlight up there. So the skins tend to get a little thicker, a little darker, so you get a little more color. Okay? Leading to that almost black, purpley color that we're used to seeing in Malbec. And then the diurnal temperatures. That's diurnal, not diurnal. Okay, guys, don't get that funny there. All right, <laughs> diurnal temperatures, uh, which is the difference between the daytime temperatures and the nighttime temperatures. Uh, a lot of different factors going into that, but uh, A, it gives the grapes a chance to rest in the evening. Uh, it's not constantly getting heat. Uh, when it gets cooler, it also allows it to stay on the vine a little longer and hopefully develop a little more acidity, which uh, Malbec can be a little light on sometimes. All right. Uh, they're using wild yeast uh, at Katina along with uh, 20, 12 months, not 20, sorry, 12 months in barrel when they make this. 35% uh, of that is new. Is 100% Malbec and 13.5% alcohol. This is the 2019, by the way. I'm not sure if I said that earlier. Mm. That's a lovely, lovely aromas there. Blackberry. Maybe a little raspberry. Definitely some blueberry. Again, one of those notes you don't get too often in wine, but definitely in a Malbec. Sweet tobacco and vanilla really kind of jump out at you. All right. 
Uh, nice thing about Malbecs is most of the time you can take them home and drink them right away. Uh, on the flip side, they can also age for a, a long period of time. Um, I know I talk about that sometimes. If you're lucky enough to be able to get a case of wine, I really recommend you put some away and try it down the road. See how it's changed over time. And can make a difference. All right. Let's go ahead and give this a taste. Wow. So a lot of body there, a lot of mouthfeel. I think uh, whole milk kind of feel. All right. It's uh, medium alcohol. Pretty low tannins. I won't say low, low, but medium minus. Um, same with the acid. It's a, it's a medium minus acid. So again, that's why it's important to have it up there that high that actually retains some acid. Uh, this would probably be just a real flabby wine if it was made uh, somewhere lower in the mountains. Uh, it is dry, by the way, also. Uh, I couldn't find an actual sugar content on it, but this is considered dry. One of my favorite pairings with this would be a uh, hanger steak or a skirt steak with chimichurri sauce. Um, you know, I'm a big proponent of uh, that wine and food go together. So what do they have in Argentina? A lot of is beef. So I would go with the beef and, of course, the chimichurri sauce. Very traditional uh, Argentinian uh, sauce to put on top of the beef. It'd be awesome with this. I would highly recommend that. Overall, I would give that a four glasses. It's a good value. Uh, it's a solid wine. You're going to be very happy with that. Uh, as long as you don't pay over $20 for it. If you see anybody who's charging that much for it, um, you should go somewhere else. Uh, but between, again, $16.99 and $19.99, Great value. Uh, it did get, you know, I lost a little sticker here, but it did, get, it did get 92 points from somebody. I don't know. You know how I feel about points. Um, but I highly recommend this. Go ahead and give it a shot. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, I will also link to their page in case you're interested. Uh, don't forget, like, share, and subscribe if you like what I'm doing here. If you're interested in seeing more. Uh, also, the iHeartWine merchandise is available at iHeartWine.com. Uh, today's wardrobe presented by Dow. I mean, this lovely little sweater here. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, Katina, keep up the great work. Until next time, I hope you heart your wine as much as I do.